Hey, hello everyone. My name is Suraj, and today we'll study dynamic imaging using STED microscopy. So, what is STED? STED stands for Stimulated Emission Depletion Microscopy, and it's a super resolution imaging technique. So, it's based on a far field fluorescence light microscopy technique invented by Stephen Hell and Jan Wickman in 1994. So. Actually, the state idea was patented by Okhonin, a uh, Russian scientist, in 1986. Uh, but in 1994, this is a huge breakthrough in far-field light microscopy. So let's see why. So we'll see an example of far-field light microscopy. Uh, but first, we'll see the limitations of light microscopy. So in light microscopy, a point source, when imaged using an optical system, creates a diffraction limited spot given by Abbey's criterion lambda by two times the numerical aperture and this is approximately 200 nanometers this was given in 1873 as you see here and uh, so for more than a hundred years this was the limitation in light microscopy let's see one of the applications of light microscopy confocal so that's how you shine light on a sample and fluorescence is collected and sent to the detector but still the resolution is 200 nanometers and that is why we have the concept of STED microscopy. So STED is a far field light microscopy which increases the resolution beyond the diffraction limit of 200 nanometers and that is why it is known as super resolution imaging technique. Some other techniques are palm storm, expansion, resolved etc which are super resolution imaging techniques. Uh, so yeah so many applic diverse applications of STED include structural analysis, correlative methods, multicolored STED, live cell imaging, and STED at radio rates and beyond. So we will focus our attention on the principle of STED and dynamic imaging using STED. That's the principle of STED microscopy. So as, I, as we discussed, basically it's a fluorescence based far field light microscopy. So you excite an electron from the ground state to, to the first electronically excited state and then it emits fluorescence by spontaneous emission. In addition to this, what STED does is we incident a STED beam of higher wavelength to deplete the fluorophores from, emit, from emitting fluorescence. So yeah, so that's how we have stimulated emission. So the photons that are emitted by stimulated emission are red shifted and the wavelength differs from that of the fluorescence wavelength and that is how we can distinguish between the ones emitting fluorescence and the ones which are emitted by stimulated emission. Let's have a look at yeah, the basic implementation of a STED microscope. So this is the excitation laser which we use in confocal microscopy but in addition instead we use this STED beam which is phase modulated and red shifted that means higher wavelength an incident. So we can see here an excitation spot as in confocal and here we have a stead, a donut shape. So this is the stead beam which is incident except at the central focal point and that is why we can achieve this resolution of 20 nanometers. So here we can see the phase modulation. So only the central focal, this blue curve is allowed to emit fluorescence while others are depleted because of STED. And now you can see how the spectral width of this fluorescence has reduced and you have a very central focal spot active and emitting fluorescence. So I've purposely drawn this, this structure to show I have highlighted some molecules which are not you cannot distinguish it in confocal microscopy but you can using STED because you only leave the central focal spot active. Here you have actually two molecules and you can't distinguish but the concept of STED is that the higher the intensity of the STED, stead beam the narrower is your central focal spot. We'll st see it in a few moments. First we'll discuss why is STED depleting these fluorescents. So the this is a plot of fluorescence ability versus the intensity of the incident beam. So once the intensity of incident beam is higher than the saturation intensity, the fluorescence ability depletes. And that's exactly what STED take advantage of. So the STED beam is always the intensity of the STED beam is always higher than the saturation intensity, and that is why 
it depletes the fluorescence except at the central focal spot and that is how we have this effective point spread function a uh, very narrow focal spot so the abbey's criterion that we discussed lambda upon two times the numerical aperture has now one more term in the denominator which is square root of one plus i upon i s i is the intensity of stair beam i s is the saturation intensity so the higher this denominator that means the higher this ratio of i by i s the narrower will be your diffraction limited spot and so now it's completely dependent on the incident stead beam because saturation intensity will be constant will be a constant and for a given fluorophore and that's so when you in increase the incident intensity of stead beam you'll get a narrower focal spot so now the resolution can be 10 times better approximately 20 nanometers than the diffraction limited resolution of 200 nanometers and therefore this technique is known as super resolution imaging technique you can see a clear difference with, between confocal microscopy and stent microscopy in terms of the resolution. And this concept then goes to dynamic imaging, that is a video using stent microscopy. So as we see, there's an excitation laser and there's a stent laser, and they so which is phase modulated, and both are reflected from a dichroic mirror. Then these relay lenses are used for uh, adjusting the transmission distance and this resonance scanner uh, oscillates at 16 kilohertz to scan in the x direction and this light is finally incident on using an inverted microscope on this sample the quarter wave, wave plate ensures that you create a donut like shape uh, of a stead beam and incident on the sample and the fluorescence emitted is again uh, traces the path retraces this path of incident light and passes through the dichroic mirrors because it allows the fluorescence light to pass through it and reflects all other wavelengths. Uh, and here you uh, incident it on a bandpass filter which um, re resolves for noise so that's basically for noise cancellation and then you incident it on a multi-mode fiber and then a fiber coupler which splits the intensity into four so that's how you can increase the speed of your acquisition so when you incident it on four different avalanche photodiodes then the speed of processing is definitely four times and that's the basic principle of dynamic imaging using stead microscopy and again you can see how a stead beam is how a sc sample is scanned using stead microscopy and yeah that's a that's a, an example of how individually particles are located as well as trace so these yellow lines are actually the particle tracking these particles of, are of 36 nanometers diameters and yeah so that's that's how we that's an advantage of stead uh, of super resolution and now if we compare stead with palm and storm so uh, instead we use a pattern of light a known pattern of light and that's why we know actually know the coordinates before scanning so we know at what position we are scanning so even a single photon emitted from that molecule is sufficient to know that uh, there is a molecule at this location uh, so that's one of the advantage but in palm storm you randomly excite molecules and so you need to have the higher the number of photons emitted from that position the better will be your localization and that's why you have a root m in this um, the disadvantage of stead can be it requires many on off cycles depending on how narrow or how wide this central focal spot is so if it's wide uh, a particular molecule can be excited and depleted a number of times and it might, may not be survive for longer durations which is not the case in palm storm one molecule is ex excited and depleted only once so there's only one on off cycle and again we'll see how the stead scanning is done compared to palm storm yeah so uh, actually this is a rough idea of how palm storm is but when one molecule is active the all others are depleted and yeah one more advantage of stead we'll discuss what if the sample moves during the scan so 
Because adjacent molecules are scanned in a very short time interval, so the features can be extracted with high precision even if the sample moves in case of stare. In case of palm, uh, the adjacent molecules are mostly scanned after very long time intervals because of random excitation and so the feature extra extraction is difficult. So here we can see that separation is also critical along with localization and stare is definitely an advantage in, in such cases. And uh, let's go back to one slide. Yeah, the image quality you can see um, definitely better in case of stead. But uh, when you apply Wiener filter to stead, uh, you can see uh, it's a much high quality. Um, so what is done is the intensity peaks, which are less than 10% of the highest peaks, are discarded to filter noise. And you can see a very high quality stead image in this case. Um, it so for what takes for a video for super resolution we need to record more number of tiny spaces which means longer acquisition time and that's a that's a big challenge in dynamic imaging but stat provides flexibility in this case so you can tune the focal spot size uh, by the intensity of the stat beam and if the focal spot size is larger then you can uh, do scan uh, really faster uh, that's that's the uh, flexibility that STED provides. Uh, the model which we s have seen um, up till now has a video rate of 80 frames per second. So you can see that using STED we have three times the video rate which is around 26 to 28 frames per second and with 10 times higher resolution. And we can see uh, one more latest application, yeah, dynamic imaging using FASTED. So here we have used bidirectional scanning, a fast photo detector, fast data acquisition with FPGA. So this is basically an improvement in the basic STED technique. Here we have used stage scanning and sinusoidal speed profile and we can scan, you can see 31,600 lines per second. So now you have a frame rate of 200 frames per second. But as we discussed that this is uh, application dependent here, the diameter as you see is 30 nanometer to image dynamics of a dense colloidal crystal. And so if you can increase the focal, uh, focal spot size, then the speed of video is definitely going to increase. And here are a few applications of STED. You can image a nuclear pore complex of a Xenophus levis. Uh, you can see that in STED you can easily resolve those eight sub-molecules of the nuclear pore. And in confocal you, you have no chance of resolving that kind of resolution. Uh, similarly in a drosophilia larvae you can see uh, the proteins. Uh, again STED has a pretty good resolution in this case as well. Um, also, we have uh, have some applications in uh, uh, living uh, living animals. So, so this is a living mouse brain was imaged using STED. Uh, it was given anesthesia, and you can see uh, the morphological features uh, like formation of cup shape, and same in that of a hippocampal organ or typical slice. And uh, these features are pretty interesting and can provide you with a lot of information. So uh, let's come to the pros and cons. So STED definitely first is a super resolution imaging technique. Then you have a known pattern of incident light. And so the positioning of molecules uh, is quite fast. You already know the positions. And plus when you uh, need only one photon per molecule uh, for high precision local localization and that's uh, where you have higher video rates and also because the adjacent molecules are scanned with shorter time intervals you have higher accuracy with higher video rates and here you have uh, image formation is physical in nature so you can see the resolution is uh, solved by the stead uh, beam the super resolution and so you don't need any image processing further image processing or complex uh, algorithms for high quality images and so you can see the resolution is no more a physics dilemma it's now a chemistry problem also but everything that glitters cannot be gold so we have some cons as well uh, here you have seen that the stead you have really high intensity stead beam so and the single molecules undergo many on off cycles so it may not survive for the complete time scan and also you need 
to continuously bombard these high intensity stat beams uh, to maintain the depleted state uh, every time a molecule comes to the excited state you need to uh, deplete it so this can lead to photo bleaching and if you see this resolution of state compared to expansion it's still less so some of the recent techniques have really good resolution uh, and uh, also palm storm can have better spatial resolution but at the cost of longer acquisition time so that's uh, an overview of what we have discussed and that's about stead super resolution microscopy yeah thank you